hello everybody so a woman dies in every 7 minutes due to cervical cancer cervical cancer is one of the main reasons of high mortality among women but at the same time it's a cancer that can be avoided with timely vaccination screening and medical intervention so let's get the first hand knowledge from our expert tonight good evening to every person from our happy go lucky community who's present here and who will be watching us later on youtube i'm divya shah from radio diva and it's an initiative to reach out create awareness on important mental health issues holistic well-being and we also have fun and frolic sessions where we laugh sing enjoy and celebrate life illustrious speakers share their wisdom and experiences with us inspiring us to make positive changes in our lives so if you like our content be generous to give us that extra token of encouragement by hitting that like button also subscribe so that you know when your uh, video is uploaded and please share it with friends and family so that they can also benefit by our engaging and relevant content follow the radio diva page on instagram and facebook and be part of our happy go lucky community so let's welcome welcome with applause on the chat box dr swasti she is a senior consultant gynae uh, cancer and she is a surgeon both laparoscopic and robotic she is associated with all the three branches of max hospital ma'am such a privilege to have you thank you so much for uh, you know doing this for us because it's a important topic and i just hope that all the people who will be joining us on the zoom and who will be later listening to the youtube video will benefit out of you, this session so thank you so much dr swasti for thank you divya for having me here today and it's almost a pleasure for me to join all of you and answer all your queries and uh, I- i'll be very happy if everybody interacts and you know pours their heart out i think the question started coming in the chat box <laughs> yes <laughs> so yes i i think all our people are amazing and i'm sure they have lots and lots of uh, questions so uh, i can see somebody called dcp varsha gupta welcome to the family ma'am L- lovely to have you yeah so uh, maybe we'll talk once <laughs> yeah you can unmute if you want to you can unmute ni mujhe bahut khushi ho rahi hai ki aaj dr swasti ki is webinar mein mujhe bhi mauka mila hai unko sunne ka और आपको एक चीज बताती हूँ मैं कि मेरी अपने एलएनएस क्लब में परसों डॉक्टर स्वस्ती एक बार फिर हम लोगों को सर्वाइकल कैंसर के बारे में बताने के लिए आ रही हैं That's wonderful. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you so much, Varsha ji. And I'm sure uh, Swasti ma'am is doing everything to create awareness. So yes, Rupali, it's lovely being part of the session. And you know, hats off to people like Dr. Swasti who are taking that extra effort to reach out to people and create awareness. So thank you so much, ma'am. Once again, what a privilege to have you. So, uh, ma'am, let's start. I mean, uh, yeah. I have made you the co-host you want to share let's get started so i think the slides are visible and the idea to have a little representation a little diagrammatic representation to for all our women viewers and listeners to understand what we are going to talk today So Devi I think you can take the lead and we can start off our show today. Um, ma'am you want to explain in the start and then we take the Okay. Talk. Yeah, sure we can do that. So uh um friends today we are going to talk about cervical cancer and as um, our RJ Divya said that uh, cervical cancer is a very common cause of uh, cancer it's a, it's a fourth most com- common cancer in indian women and globally as well and uh, you know this is important because most of the times women don't even know ko yahi nahi pata hota they don't know where 
exactly the cervix is located. So most of the times when we say cervical cancer, they think it is a neck cancer. So cervix is actually the lower part of the mouth of, or the mouth of the uterus. So you can see in this diagram that cervix is the lower part of the uterus. The rest above is the body. And then this opens into the vagina. And um, when we see from below, this is how the cervix looks. And when we see cancer, we can see some tumor or uh, uh, abnormality on the cervix when we examine from below. Now, um, this is the fourth most common ca cause of cancer as well, death from cancer in women all across the world. And more than 200 women are dying every day in India from cervical cancer. And every hour, about eight women. And every seven minutes, we lose one woman. So this is a cancer which is 100% preventable. And uh, you'll be glad to know that January is a cervical cancer awareness month. Not that you only become aware in January. This is an initiative that is carried on in all the months. It's not, it's not a month specific issue, but particularly this month, we scale up our activities to make women aware about cervical cancer because this is 100% preventable. And this is actually caused by a virus which is known as the human papilloma virus or the HPV, which causes lots of cancers in men and women. So it's not only cervical cancer, but it's vulval cancer and cancers of the head and neck in the men as well as anal and penile cancers, and even genital warts, both in men as well as women. So this is a common, this is a uh, global issue, and it is seen in all countries. And usually the mode of spread of this virus is sexual transmission. So we know that there are lots of types of these viruses, particularly high-risk strains are about 13, out of which 16 and 18 are the ones which cause cancer, and the low-risk ones cause warts, and, um, you know, how cervical cancer is caused is actually by um, progression of uh, once this virus stays in the cells of the cervix and the vagina, it just makes its own home. And then it progresses to chronic infection, pre-cancer, three stages of pre-cancer, CIN1, 2, and 3, and finally invasive cancer. So cancer doesn't form in a day. It takes about 15 to 18 years for cervical cancer to form once the virus starts staying permanently in the cells of the cervix. Now, this is a huge window of opportunity. So we have enough time where we can, even if the woman is infected by cancer, we have enough time to screen, detect early, maybe even before the formation of cancer in the uh, infection stage or in the cervical pre-cancer stage where it's completely treatable. And what to do to prevent is by vaccination and start of the screening in a timely manner. So for screening, when we say go ahead and test yourself, doesn't mean that you have to have symptoms or you have to have a problem. Because most of the times when I say that every woman should go and get a regular checkup done, I'm, I'm posed with a question that why we need a regular checkup? Why do we need? What do we need regular checkup? We are absolutely okay. So the idea is because you are absolutely fine and you have no symptom, early cancer may not have symptoms at all. So that is the challenge. If early cancer will not have symptoms, then that is the right time to go and start checking yourselves regularly and going to a gynecologist for a regular pap smear and a HPV test. So we have tests now where we can, at the time of doing a pap smear, detect the virus and continue to screen the women as per protocol. So what are the risk factors? Which women may have higher risk of cervical cancer are the ones which have a persistent virus which have other sexually transmitted infections like gonorrhea, like syphilis, like chlamydia. They have multiple sexual partners or their par current partner has had multiple sexual partners. If they have early age of initiation of sexual activity, if their first pregnancy is at a young age. So we know that uh, wherever you have childbirth at a younger age, you know, child marriages, early age marriages, and early initiation of sexually act, sexual activity will all lead to, and lots of children, multiparity, more than three children to a woman. So all these are higher risk factors than women who've got HIV or AIDS or have had some kind of a transplant where they're on, on medication to suppress their immunity, smoking, 
or having some family history of cervical cancer in the mother or sister may also predispose higher to a cervical cancer. So I'm often asked, how do we know and what are the kinds of signs, uh, you know, where we could detect um, having cancer or what are the warning signs? So of course, an unusual vaginal discharge, which persists or recurs back even after treatment, abnormal vaginal bleeding, longer and heavier menstrual cycles, discomfort while urination, loss of bladder control, pain during intercourse, constant fatigue, pelvic pain, unexplained weight loss, leg pain could be 10 warning signs of cervical cancer. And what do we do? We educate. So awareness is important. The woman needs to understand why we need a cervical cancer elimination program. And second thing in prevention is vaccination and screening. So vaccinate girls start right at nine years of age and continue till 26 years of age. All girls between nine to 15 should have two doses of HPV vaccine. We've got three types of vaccines in the market. One which is active against two strains, one which is active against four strains. And recently, two months back, we've had a launch where nine high-risk strains, two low-risk and seven high-risk strains uh, give us a 90% protection. So that's known as a non-avalent vaccine. It's slightly more expensive. One dose costs about 10,000, but that is the most effective vaccine. It's uh, been launched in India now. So uh, these are the kind of things which, which need to be done. So how, how should you have the vaccines? So nine to 15 have two doses, six months apart. Over 15 years of age, three doses, zero, two, and six months. So uh, that's the vaccination schedule. But we have to educate the mothers of these girls and also the late adolescent girls that once they start um, sexual activity or after they're married, then they must start a screening uh, for the cervical cancer, having a regular pap smear and HPV testing after two years of sexual activity. So this is very, very important because in particularly in immunocompromised women, because they will be the ones who will uh, not take 15 to 18 years to develop cancer after an HPV persistent infection. So this is how pap smears are taken either on slides, but the current ones are with these brushes, the blue brushes, because uh, you just take the cells and you can read on what are the changes in the cells and simultaneously detect the presence or absence of a high risk human papilloma virus, which is the current recommendation. So we should start within two years of initiation of sexual activity and HPV testing should start over 25 years, must continue till 65 years, every five years if the tests are normal. But if there are some symptoms before five years, must go and see the gynecologist immediately. So how do we reduce risk of cervical cancer? Get regular pap smears, limit the amount of sexual partners with smoking, avoid secondhand smoke. That means if somebody in your family is smoking or in your vicinity is smoking, you are taking that smoke within your body. So that's secondhand or passive smoking. Try and avoid that. If you're sexually active, use condoms. Follow up abnormal pap smears. Don't be afraid to get a biopsy done if you need to on an abnormal smear that does not spread cancer. It's a myth that doing a biopsy will spread cancer if there is any. And of course, encourage all young girls to take the HPV vaccine. In fact, the non-avalent vaccine is even licensed for adolescent boys because boys also need protection. And once the boys and the girls are vaccinated together, it will give us better immunity in the uh, community. So I think the way we can um, address issues which need to be addressed and probably then also take that forward with our questions. Yeah, ma'am, sure. That was, you know, a good like idea about the entire thing. And I'm sure there are so many people who have uh, doubts and questions. So I think Rupali Di posed a question, ki, what are the symptoms that we need to keep up? Uh, on which you did mention, but will you like to talk about it? So um, uh, I think symptoms, let's not wait for symptoms. That's my number one take home. Uh, early cancer may not have any symptoms at all. So if you are regularly getting a pap smear and HPV testing done, you can pick up cancer as early as a, in a pre-cancer stage or as early as a very, very uh, initial part initial stage of cancer where it's completely treatable and with, with very good outcomes. So we should not wait for uh, any symptoms to happen. 
in case you've not got yourself screened and what are the warning kind of signs you should look for i just mentioned that you should look for any abnormal vaginal discharge with or without odor persistent despite treatment of infection it recurs it it is persistent that's something to worry about and um, abnormal vaginal bleeding in between periods you get a spot of blood after intercourse you get some bleeding after periods have stopped for a year you get some bleeding or spotting or your periods are heavier than usual or they uh, the flow is heavy or, or or just the duration of flow is heavy or prolonged these are the kind of things you should bother about recurrent urine infections pain in the lower abdomen some pelvic pain or pachyc or uh, the constant fatigue change in the urination habits these are the kind of things that you know uh, you should watch out seriously for not that to say anybody who will have these symptoms is likely definitely to have cancer but of course these are things which should not be neglected or uh, left alone so um, don't wait for symptoms is the take home so how frequently one can test it once a five year yeah so if you're doing a pap smear and an hpv test that is the actual standard you should do it every five years if it's normal in case if you have a symptom in between you should go and get yourself checked up at that time i would recommend all women over 40 years of age to have an annual checkup which must include a gynae checkup so very often you know i operated on a patient with uh, with a cervical issue and i said why you did not he said every year we used to get a health checkup done so i said why were you not checking or why were you not doing a gyne he said nobody suggested a gynecological examination to us so we were doing the checkup we were doing our blood tests we were doing ecg we were doing sugars we were doing lipid profiles and we were uh, checking for the heart and everything else but we were not doing a gynecological examination we never got an ultrasound done never got a pap smear done so we didn't know and that is why i said the first thing is education and awareness we need to make people aware our women aware because of course if our women are healthy definitely calls for a healthier family healthier children healthier household so i think if we should focus on the women being extremely healthy and being able to take care of their cells and their bodies right i totally Okay, so there are lots of questions that are personally wow. being asked with me. Okay. Uh, so I will I will go ahead. So can unmarried girls, spe- uh, especially who are sexually active, they can or uh, they uh, can contract uh, um, cervical cancer? It's a very good question. I said um, cervical cancer uh, to the tune of ninety nine point seven percent is actually caused by the virus. So a non a uh, human papilloma virus cause will be there only in 0.3% cases now um it's very difficult to pinpoint what could be the causes if there is no virus involved second thing is that if the woman is not sexually active she is less likely to contract the viral infection but also to say that sexual transmission mode is only for about 99% of cases that means 1% non sexual uh, transmission can also happen like use of infected towels you're going out you're not using your own towels you've used a towel which is contaminated with the virus not cleaned or washed properly could also lead to uh, you know a human papilloma virus whether or not what what viral load we don't know but the prime mode of transmission is sexual transmission so very very unlikely that they will get uh, uh, the cervical cancer if they are not sexually active the possibility is very low okay so somebody is saying that i have uh, gone through hysterectomy uh, if i'm spelling it right seven yes. years uh, now i am 47 any risk of cervical cancer that i have very good question so uh, see uh, as i told you the virus lives in that area it lives in the vagina and infects the cells of the cervix and the vagina and also um the uh, uh, vulval area the outside area the external genitalia now um if you've got a hysterectomy done your uterus has been removed then we should know what is the biopsy report if your biopsy report showed no changes in the mouth of the uterus or the cervix which uh you know simulated a pre cancer or cancer then and you were hpv negative okay 
then there is less likelihood that you will develop it in the near future. But you are only 47. You don't need to do regular pap smears. Okay, you can stop doing a pap smear once your uterus is removed and you have no cancer or uh, pre-cancer. But at the other hand, you must continue your annual checkups, which will include a speculum examination by a gynecologist to have a look at your vagina. If there is any suspicion, a pap smear should be taken. Because if you have a persistent viral infection, even at the age of 50, you can still have a vaginal cancer later on. It's not as if those, those changes cannot be there. But if you now currently have a virus viral infection and you had some precancerous changes, you must every three months continue to follow up with your gynecologist for having a speculum examination and a pap smear. That is important because cervix has been removed, but vagina is still there. You can still have precancerous lesions of the vagina and of the vulva, of the outer area. So the viral virus can actually cause precancers and cancers of all these areas. So it's very important to know, know your biopsy report and what was the status at that time. Right. And anything else uh, you want to mention, let me know. I mean, put it in the chat box. So there's somebody who wants to know, is, uh, is are, like, can a person who's residing in a small city uh, can go through this test? I mean, is there any test that you think that people living in, residing in small cities can go ahead and do? Yeah. So pap smears are usually available even in towns. Uh, we've progressed to those times that uh, other than rural areas, you will have definitely pap smears available in cities and towns. Now mm -hmm. question comes, if you're living in a rural area, which is uh, less accessible healthcare is there, then we have something called as VIA, which is known as visual inspection with acetic acid, where we train our healthcare um, uh, workers and we, we uh, have the local uh, doctors who are there in the primary health centers to actually apply um, a particular concentration of vinegar. The kind of vinegar that you eat, it's a little different from that. And we apply that on the mouth of the uterus or the cervix. And then, because we don't have um, advanced instruments available, we look at it from our naked eyes and we see grossly if there's any abnormality, we do a biopsy straight away. Or maybe we then burn it with uh, cautery. So that is known as the see and treat approach. Even if we don't have a facility to a biopsy, we see abnormality, we can tackle it there and then. And that needs a lot of experience. So there are lots of training programs, actually. So just like in India, maternal mortality was brought down by the help of ASHA workers who would be trained in delivering uh, women so that they can have a safe and uh, uh, delivery without any infection. Similarly, on those lines, the government is now training healthcare workers to see the uh, cervix. And if they find any abnormality, which cannot be handled there, they can be referred to a higher center in the district or in the community health center later on higher. So there are facilities for rural settings as well. Uh, there's a protocol. So somebody says that uh, brown discharge after 10 days of period, is it normal? No, it's not normal. Uh, must get yourself examined. It may be due to infection. It may be due to a polyp in the lining of the uterus. Uh, so that has to be seen. It may be due to a hormonal imbalance or maybe due to a thyroid disorder. So all these things need to be excluded. So you definitely need to go and see a specialist. Okay, so somebody's daughter is 21 and 27. Uh, can, be, uh, can they go ahead and get them vaccinated? Yes, of course. Um, the risk, the uh, advantage or the protection rate from a, a bivalent or a quadrivalent vaccine is 70% uh, if it is given before the initiation of sexual activity. But once the girl is sexually active, the protection rate is much lower. Um, I would recommend all women to try and take a vaccination prior to initiation of sexual activity, it gives the best results. Even if it's not so, please focus on regular pap smears. So the one who is 21 years can definitely take it. The one who's 27 should take it there and now and finish all the three doses. And if she's already married, then she must start on a cervical cancer screening program, which is a pap smear and an HPV testing because she's over 25. 
So, you know, not only vaccination, because vaccination, despite of a vaccination, you must continue doing the screening. That's the message today. Right. So, and there is a question that any specific risk for menopausal women, what other precautionary measure, measures can be taken other than regular tests? Yeah. So watch out for any bleeding or vaginal spotting. Must do your annual checks, which should involve a pap smear and an HPV testing every five years. Annually, you must have a gynecological speculum examination. A gynecologist should look at your cervix. You must have an ultrasound of the whole abdomen and a transvaginal ultrasound to check for the lining of the uterus. If you have family history of cancers, then we have to work out what kind of cancers you've had in your family members and whether you are at a higher risk of developing some particular cancer. Answers. If that's the way, then you need to have a genetic counseling. And this I'm talking in view of, you know, gynecological cancers particularly. So I think, and uh, for the breast cancer, you must have a mammogram if you're over 50 every year. And if you're over 40, then every two to three years. So these are the kind of things women must definitely look at. Uh, you know, I will admit to the blunder that I've done. I took my first vaccination and then I just forgot about it. I, I mean, How long was that? I and, that was, and that was like good. Just I think before COVID started, I had taken. Don't, don't worry. And you I resume and complete. Jab jago tabhi hai. <laughs> so I go <laughs> now. I go through the three vaccinations. Uh, yes. And uh, or I uh, should I? You know, I have to no, restart. You you restart your this thing, and uh, you can restart your vaccination. Cool. <laughs> don't I, have to take your um, at the first dose again. You can complete oh. two doses. Okay. I mean, there's no yeah. problem because no almost problem. I think four or five years has passed by and I just forgot about it. So what you can do is you can take the non-avalent vaccine. It's a little more expensive, but the protection rate is much higher. So now you can take all the three doses for the non-avalent vaccine if it's four or five years. That within one to two years, we say, fine, it's okay, just start. But uh, now that you've, you've <laughs> forgotten it for long. <laughs> you know, I was feeling so very ashamed to even put that yeah. question. You, but I'm I, so glad you honestly admitted it. I'm sure many people will scratch their heads and say, oh, we've also done something like that. Let's get back to work. <laughs> so uh, I will definitely go for that. Yes. Yeah. Any has any question? Please uh, go. Ji, may I uh, question push na chaungi, ma'am? Uh, yes. May 45 years ki hone wali hoon. To kya is age pe aakar may uh, vaccination lagwa sakti hoon cervical cancers ka? So ma'am, look, you can put it, but the licensing of the vaccine is 9 to 26 years. You will not have the benefit of putting the vaccine. At your age, I think you should have a liquid pap smear in every 5 years. So this is more beneficial for you. Rather than relying completely on the vaccine. Rather than relying completely on the vaccine. You know, it will not be the benefit of the vaccine. Because there is already a sexual activity initiated in a lot of time. So exposure to virus definitely hoga or licensing 26 years tak hai, toh better hai ki aap ab screening ki taraf chahe. Okay, thank you. Right. Ma'am, is there anything, I mean, I just checked on the chat box. I don't think anybody else has any question. I mean, I'll encourage anybody who has a question, please go ahead and get it cleared from ma'am. So it would be nice because, you know, we all don't get an expert with us every, you know, like somebody who is and at her work, you know, we'll get the first hand knowledge basically. So I'll request anybody who has a question, please ask. And anything that, yeah, Anita, you'll have to unmute yourself. You'll have to unmute. I unmuted. Yes. Hello, doctor. I am Anita. Hello. Actually, um, I'm, my age is 37 presently and 35 pe meri daughter born hui thi. It's a, uh, she is a second child. Okay. Okay. Or cesarean ke through hi hui thi. But last few months, I have heavy bleeding. Ho rahi hai. Or at the time of my daughter's birth, at that time, the doctor had removed the C-section at that time, a febroid bhi removed. Kiya tha. They said that we would show it at that time, then we removed that. And they checked it, it was non-cancerous. Mm. But since, I think, five, six months, I have to say, second, third, fourth day is extremely heavy bleeding. Rehti hai. And after the period of time, I had a 13th, 14th day, white discharge evolution period, I saw a brown discharge. Hai mujhe. Then I consulted the gynec. उन्होंने कहा कि आप वेजाइनल टीवीएस कराइए तो उसमें आया कि यूट्रस लाइनिंग इस थिक इट इस नियर टू 10 मिम शायद होनी चाहिए बिलो 5 मिम 
देन दे सजेस्टेड कि हिस्ट्रोस्कोपी करा लीजिए आप एक बार बट मैं भी रिसेंटली ही शिफ्ट हुई हूँ अजमेर में एंड वी आर वेरी न्यू हियर वी आर नॉट वेरी अवेयर विद डॉक्टर्स तो ऐसा कुछ है कि बिफोर सेलेक्टिंग द डॉक्टर आई नीड टू मतलब क्या किसी भी गायनिक के पास जाके करा सकती हूँ क्योंकि तो देर आर तीन तीन चार चीजें हैं इसमें जो ध्यान देने वाली हैं एक तो यू आर थर्टी सेवन एनी वुमेन ओवर थर्टी फाइव हैज अब नॉर्मल ब्लीडिंग शुड हैव अ बायोप्सी सेकंड थिंग है क्या आपके पीरियड्स इरेगुलर आते हैं नो दे आर नॉट इरेगुलर वेट गेन किया है हाँ मेरा वेट गेन है आई एम सिक्सटी सेवन प्रेजेंटली तो इट कुड बी ड्यू टू हॉर्मोनल इम्बेलेंस पहले कितना था वेट लाइक बिफोर डॉटर्स बर्थ इट वॉज फिफ्टी नाइन सिक्सटी बट आफ्टर बर्थ के बाद दूसरा एक अपना हिमोग्लोबिन चेक करिए और तीसरी चीज है की बायोपसी कराने में कोई हार्म नहीं है कई बार हॉर्मोनल इम्बेलेंस और वेट गेन के कारण हमारे यूट्रस की लाइनिंग जो है इरेगुलरली शेड होती है एंड कैंसर्स बनने की वहां पे चांसेस ज्यादा हैं जरूरी नहीं है माउथ का कैंसर हो सर्वाइकल कैंसर हो एंडोमीट्रियल कैंसर या बॉडी ऑफ यूट्रस के कैंसर हो सकते हैं तो ये सारी चीजें जो है आप एक बार प्लान आउट करिए सी ए स्पेशलिस्ट एंड देन टेक दिस फॉरवर्ड ओके एंड मैम देर इज वन मोर एक्चुअली जब मैंने ये अपना अल्ट्रासाउंड कराया था उसमें उन्होंने लिखा था देर इज अ माइल्ड चेंज दैट पी आई डी एरिया कुछ ऐसा इन्फेक्शन पी आई डी इज देर एनी इन्फेक्शन वही मैं कह रही हूँ इन्फेक्शन पेल्विक इन्फ्लेमेटरी डिजीज दैट्स एक्सैक्टली वट एम सेंग यू नीड टू बी ट्रीटेड विद एंटीबायोटिक्स फॉर थ्री वीक्स सो यू शुड डेफिनेटली सी अनाकोलॉजिस्ट गेट योर सेल्फ एग्जामिन फर्स्ट टेक एंटीबायोटिक्स फॉर थ्री वीक्स देन डू अप्स में प्लस एच पी वी टेस्टिंग Followed mm-hmm. by and then आपकी एक next cycle में पता चल जाएगा कि infection के कारण जो problem थी वो कितनी resolve हुई है कई बार बायोपसी जो आप बोल रहे हैं ये मैं सर मैम यहाँ पे अजमेर में तो आई थिंक इट शुड बी डन विद वेरी स्पेशलाइज डॉक्टर राजस्थान एरिया अर्लियर आई वॉज इन नोएडा सो आई वॉज कंसर्न वेलकम टू नोएडा फेसिलिटीज उतनी नहीं होंगी हमेशा गैप्स होंगे कुछ चीजें होंगी कुछ चीजें नहीं होंगी तो यू कैन ऑलवेज यू आर एक्सपोज टू डेली एन सी आर अर्लियर यू बीन लिविंग हियर your your comfort mm-hmm. level is here, your relatives or part of family mm-hmm. may be here, I'll I'll visit. visit. Ma'am, do do you give yeah. online consultation also yeah, so yeah. that I do uh, video, my... I do video consults. You can definitely take an appointment for a video consult, and mm-hmm. then we can take it from there. Ma'am is with Max Hospital, so you can always get in touch. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Just thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anita, for asking the question. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Deja. Thank you. So I read a question. Yeah, so there is a question. Ki, uh, could you please tell what age vaccine isn't effective? Is not effective or is effective? Isn't effective? Isn't effective. Okay. Yeah. So, nine uh, to twenty-six years is the recommended age for taking the vaccine, because the con the data that we have for the vaccine says that the protection rate of seventy percent for bivalent and quadrivalent vaccine is. in sexually naive women that means women who have not had any sexual activity if women have had sexual activity and given the vaccine we don't have data so it is assumed that they are already exposed to the virus and the younger women may clear off the virus on their own once the age progresses and the immunity lowers 
the virus starts staying there for longer and causes the problem so the protection rates are dependent only on initiation or no initiation of sexual activity so ideally try and take the vaccine between 11 to 13 years that's a very very good age because uh, it goes well with your other vaccines uh, parents can usually take those decisions to the children and then later educate them to have screening their immune system of the girls is developing at that time. So 11 to 13 years, both for adolescent boys and girls, that is the time when your immune system is developing. So the memory of to the immunity is higher. So that is ideally the best time. And we assume, of course, the age of sexual activity initiation is lowering in our teens. But definitely we assume that probably at between 11 to 13 is still a safe period and uh, they are still sexually naive. So uh, I would recommend don't take the vaccine more than 26 years. Stick to the licensing bit and top it up with screening. If you've not taken the vaccine, heavens are not going to fall. Stay to the screening. So uh, you still have lots to achieve by screening. You can, you can still do so much. Okay. So somebody has a question, ma'am, that uh, she has... Uh, uh, she has a white patch in her vaginal area and hysterectomy is already done. And on that time, Babsy was fine without any risk. Uh, that patch was, the skin doctor told her that it's LSA. Sometimes it's shiny and visible patch and sometimes it looks blurry and not properly vis visible. Is there any risk because uh, her skin, vaginal skin brews very easily? So I will have to see only and then comment on what is the situation now. But if you've been seeing yourself through the mirror, you could probably understand whether the whiteness is progressing or not. And how, uh, if the whiteness is increasing in size or progressing or your skin is getting ulcerated, that means once you have developed multiple cracks, are they taking longer to heal, must do a re-biopsy re to exclude a precancer. So, uh, lichen sclerosis could be a pre-malignant lesion, okay? I don't know whether you've already seen a dermatologist to treat that or maybe you've been given some steroid ointments to apply, which could lead to skinning, uh, thinning of the skin in that area and also leading to early bruising and, uh, you know, cracks. That could be one of the reasons why you are having early bruising because steroid application could lead to this. But if your whiteness is increasing and you're having this as a persistent problem, you may need to get re-biopsied. Right. right. Thank you so much, ma'am. So Shruti wants to know what are the symptoms we should look for when talking about vaginal infections? Okay, so vaginal infection could present um, as a vaginal discharge, which may be offensive, non-offensive. It could be yellow. It could be mixed with little, uh, it could be pinkish mixed with a little blood. It could be whitish. It could be transparent, but foul smelling. It could be grayish. It could be um, thick and curdy. That could be denoting a fungal infection. Uh, it could be associated with um, lower abdominal pain or pelvic heaviness, dragging discomfort, um, frequency of urination sometimes because urinary passages close and uh, it could also be concomitant with a with or without a itching in the outer skin of the vulva or the perineum so uh, these could be the possibilities of um, uh, possible signs of inf uh, infection in the women Okay, I think, um, you know, you have given a great, you know, information. I think, ma'am, you know, this session, everybody would have benefit. And I'm sure, you know, all the people who will watch the video later will also benefit out of it. My daughter is, uh, I have I have a child and she is nine years old. I think I'll get her also vaccinated. And I get myself also vaccinated because I have not completed my dose. I think I will do that also, ma'am. I have to uh, take all the three. I no, no, You will take three and your daughter will take two. So both mom <laughs> and daughter can go together for the vaccination and <laughs> click a selfie and start a campaign. We'll do that. We'll do that. <laughs> Send it across to you. The yes. Both go for vaccination. And vaccination. We'll vaccination, right? The, uh, the one which you mentioned sometime back, right? Yeah, non-avalent vaccine. 
non-avalent vaccine. Cool. Any anybody else? I think everybody is thanking you, ma'am. Ki lovely and useful session. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma'am, that information that we need and we generally hesitate to ask. And you know, it's not very often that we have that trust with a doctor that we can go ahead and ask every kind of question. So I think you know, you coming to the platform and you sharing so much of valuable information really, really means a lot, ma'am. So thank you so much for being always welcome for such kind of endeavors. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody who will watch us later on uh, on uh, YouTube. Please share the video and subscribe to the video. We have uh, doctors from Max Hospital coming twice a month on Radio Diva platform. Let's you know, let's spread awareness and yeah, and let's be a happy, good, lucky community. Yes, thank you so much, everybody, and thank you so much, ma'am, for being there.